Tonight, I'm going to use a dual band filter with a stock Nifty 50 Nikon lens connected to a one-shot color astrophotography camera to take a wide field image of the night sky. Ever since I got the ZWO adapter with a filter tray, I've been wanting to image the sky with a Nifty 50 lens and my one-shot color ZWO ASI 294 MC Pro camera. I tried this briefly when I made my first video about the Rokinon lens, and in my previous attempt, I had done a time lapse. I captured a wide portion of the sky, but only using 15 second durations. 15 seconds at 18 millimeters wasn't enough time to capture any details. So tonight, I have connected my Nifty 50 at 18 millimeters to my ZWO camera. I have it mounted atop my Celestron 6SE riding on the Nexstar mount. I plan to capture about an hour's worth of data using a UV IR cut filter and then switch over to a dual band filter for the rest of the night and then combine the two images. What I'm hoping for is to see some nebulosity coming out of the dual band filter, combining with the luminous stars taken with a UV IR cut filter. My name is Chris and welcome to my channel. Let's go ahead and start a capture plan. I'm going to do one hour. Uh, I'm pointing at a region I covered the other day. So this uh, is Auriga, and this is Capella up here, which means this cool region here uh, encompasses open clusters M38, M36, and M37. Then we have the Flame Nebula and the Tadpoles Nebula, which I captured with my Celestron 6SE. Uh, last time as well and somewhere up here is the California nebula so I'm hoping to capture some nebulosity not with this uh, filter this is the uh, UV IR cut filter uh, I will be changing the filter over to uh, the dual band filter in about an hour well, looks like I'm done with my uh, UV IR cut filter imaging and uh, now I'm going to have to take some flat frames. So I'm going to be using my custom homemade UPPD mat uh, to do some sky flats. All right. Here we're going to be swapping out our filter. Hopefully we can get to it without moving the lenses. Now here I'm taking off my UPPD mat for my sky flats. So this now is the dual band filter. Get back in position here. It's been a couple of days since the imaging session where I captured Taurus and I've had a chance to process the images both from the dual band and the UV IR cut filter uh, and I've been able to combine them. 
and the results were what I was hoping for, which is uh, I was able to get the brilliance of the stars from the UVI Arcant filter, and I was able to get the details of the nebulas uh, with the dual band filter. I did have some trouble overlaying the two images together, uh, since they ended up being slightly out of sync in terms of rotation, as I had nudged the camera as I was ch uh, changing out the filter. Uh, but the results were pretty good, so this is the dual band filter. Uh, where you can see a lot of the nebulosity uh, and here on the right hand side you can see the house coming into the frame so uh, in the composited image I actually added the house and uh, then this over here is the UV IR cut filter where I can get the stars themselves um, as you can see the uh, the image is slightly out of focus um, I could have done a better job with the lens what I found is that batted off masks don't work very well at 18 millimeters uh, and what I ended up doing is just using the magnifying tool in APT and manually trying to uh, get to the stars being as small and as crisp as possible but even though I thought my focus was very good uh, when I checked after the imaging session they weren't as tight as, as I would have liked. Now what's cool about that imaging session though is that right up here we have Auriga. Uh, and within Auriga, uh, we're able to see the Flame Nebula here and then the Tadpoles Nebula right here. This is the same region of Auriga that I captured last month using my Rokin on 135mm lens. So if you've watched my earlier video about all the cool things you can see in Auriga, this was my image from that video. And here we have the Flame Nebula, the Tadpoles Nebula, M38, M36, and a whole bunch of SH2 and other IC objects, which you can image with a longer focal length scope. Uh, for my part, uh, I had imaged M38, M36, and M37, as well as the Tadpoles Nebula here, which turned out pretty well. So if you haven't seen that video, have a look. Point being, at 135 millimeters, this is what the Rokinon lens captures versus 18 millimeters and how wide of an image you get of the sky. Obviously down here we've got the Pleiades and uh, up here the uh, California Nebula. And this down here is the constellation of Taurus. So the next night was windy, too windy for me to use my Celestron 6SE with the dew hood, but it was uh, good enough for me to do another wide angle imaging session. Uh, and I took that opportunity to uh, capture Orion. So what I want to do now is just quickly step through some of my processing steps uh, with the dual band filter and the UV IR cut filter. So here I've got about an hour and a half worth of data using the UV IR cut filter. And then um, over here I have uh, about two hours worth of data using the dual band filter. Uh, what I've done with both of them is I've run them through Deep Sky Stacker. So this is Deep Sky Stacker of the uh, light frames of the UV IR cut. And here I'm using my uh, UPPD mat uh, as my flats. UPPD mat. When it comes to imaging in light polluted skies, I've always had this issue of this ring of light, uh, especially in my uh, using my Celestron 6SE, but also using wider field imaging. So what I've been using is this uh, UPPD mat filter. This is the Urban Paper Protector Diffuser Mask Astrophotography Tool. Urban Paper Protector Diffuser Mask Astrophotography Tool. So what it basically is, is a semi-transparent uh, binder paper protector. I use it in place of flats and darks. So I capture images using the same uh, duration of time as my regular light frames. Uh, and what that allows me to do is, uh, at the same time as I capture any amp glow, uh, it also picks up any light pollution distortions and that then calibrates out of the images themselves so I don't get any kind of rings or other distortions as a result of the light pollution. So here's the dual band image after stacking and we can already make out uh, first of all some of the nebulosity, the horse head, the rosette nebula, 
uh, and then up here there's another uh, nebulous region here obviously the Orion Nebula what I do next is I take my stacked image and I bring it into Cyril Cyril allows me to do some basic stretching as well as uh, removing the background of whatever background is left and uh, it allows me to do star removal that way I can bring in the star mask as well as the starless nebula image into GIMP in order to uh, further process those. So uh, this is uh, in Cyril. We can do some basic stretching. Uh, do a hard stretch there. And uh, let's see what we can bring out in terms of the nebulas. And this is what I was really excited about. You can see a lot of the nebulosity already coming out in these images. Now here's what these images look like after processing in Cyril. Uh, so here is uh, one lightly touched version. And then the same version but without stars. And here's one that's a little bit... Uh, that's got a little bit heavier stretching. You can really... Uh, I, I love how these nebulas are, are starting to come out here. Uh, you can see uh, Bernard's loop here, uh, again the horse head, the rosette nebula up here, we've got the Christmas tree nebula, and then that same image uh, stretched even further. So now we're in GIMP, and this is really the point of the entire exercise. So I was able to take the UV IR cut images of the stars. Uh, using the star mask, I was able to subtract out the stars. Now here is the dual band image with the stars subtracted and I can use this image and overlay the stars back in and have a combined image of stars uh, that are quite brilliant. Now normally the dual band filter would have limited and filtered out a lot of the starlight. So using the stars from the UV IR cut filter we now have uh, much better looking stars combined with a much stronger signal on the nebulas themselves. So I'm pretty happy with the ZWO adapter that allows me to connect the ASI camera uh, to my Nikon lenses. And I think it's pretty cool that I can use the UVIR cut and the dual band filters to separately image the stars from the nebulas and then be able to combine them in a wide field that captures a uh, obviously much wider area of the sky, which is what I was looking for. Now, if you're doing wide field imaging already with a modified DSLR or mirrorless camera, then uh, by applying filters, you can probably already do something like this. But if you're like me and you don't have a modified camera, uh, being able to do wide field astrophotography with filters is pretty exciting. Anyway, let me know what you guys think. Wide angle astrophotography with a dedicated astrophotography camera and filters using a stock DSLR lens. I like what I'm getting and I'm looking forward to uh, being able to shoot the Milky Way core in a similar fashion. I will post my final images to the end of this video. Until next time, thank you for watching and clear skies.